President, the court is now in session. President, uh, please be seated and the court is now in session and the floor is given to the defense team for Mr. Nguyen Chia to resume the questioning to this witness. Please proceed. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Your Honors. Um, Mr. Witness, we um, spoke about um, Division 703 cadres um, who had been arrested um, and who, according to the document that I showed you, had been released. Um, I would like to draw your attention to a, um, a document um, in which um, Son Sen, a person that you know well, talks about uh, various categories of enemies. And um, it is a talk, or, or rather a speech that he held um, on the 9th of October 1976 uh, together with um, uh, secretaries and deputy secretaries of divisions, of all the divisions. Um, and I would like to read to you uh, a specific excerpt and then ask you your reaction. Um, you've been talking about who constitutes enemies, etc. cetera, um, but I want to now be a little bit more specific. Uh, I actually have the, the Khmer excerpt from that document for you, Mr. President. I'm referring to document E3-13. Um, I'll be showing um, Khmer page 00052414. Um, English, it is um, ERN. Zero zero nine four zero three five four and five five and French zero zero three four four nine eight three. President, please proceed. Um, it's the part that I highlighted in orange, Mr. Witness, and it says, and I will read with you in English, operational methods. One, continuous education is imperative. Two, it is imperative to purge no good elements absolutely in the sense of an absolute class struggle. The purge is premised on three principles. Category one, the dangerous category. They must be absolutely purged. Category two, the ordinary liberal category. They must be educated again and again in our education schools. Category three, the category of those who have merely been incited by the enemy, merely believing in the enemy incitement. And as a first step, they should undergo refashioning to get them to no longer believe the enemy." End of quote. Um, Mr. Witness, this um, distinction into three categories, is that something uh, you heard Son Sen uh, or Duik or any other senior cadre uh, ever say, uh, saying at S21, the category, those three categories? Winners. I. 
was questions on this particular topic, particularly in relation to the training sessions by Duke in late 1977 and 78. There were different types of uh, arrests and study sessions. We had to be vigilant. So the vigilant stance had, however, some impacts on other issues. And during the time, there were continuous study session or education for all of us. But, uh, but just to be sure, um, Mr. Witness, was this uh, distinction in, into three kinds of enemies ever relate to you? Did, was this something that you knew at the time? Uh, was this um, a policy implemented um, within uh, the whole of uh, uh, Regiment uh, 21, S21? That was the theory or principle, and it did not fall within the, my realm of responsibility. What, what do you mean with that? Council, perhaps one question after the other instead of three questions in one, make it easier. You started out, have you ever heard that, and then you added four other questions. So perhaps one question after the other. Um, let, me, let me try it again, Mr. Witness. The distinction into three categories of uh, enemies this distinction, is that something that you know was implemented within um, the whole S21 network? That principle was to be implemented within the S21 and also outside of S21. That, that is the theory or principle of distinction. Distinction of soldiers and those who opposed and opposed the Anka and revolution. Now, do you know? Um, which categories of enemies would go to Presar and uh, who would um, go to the premises of S21, the prison of S21? The three categories for those who fell within the, the category, which uh, was not considered to be light offenses, uh, were sent to Presa. And for those who were in the cat category of a serious one, would be sent into S21. Now, do you know who decided? Um, that one particular person would go to Presar and the other would go um, to S21. I do not know who decided it. It was not my responsibility. Do you know where um, this was decided, which place?
but not done. Beyond my knowledge, uh, Council. Do you know if um, the people who had been in the trucks that would arrive um, at the Beehive radio station, um, do you know whether they would go um, to take their photos uh, and then go to S21 and subsequently uh, come back and go maybe to S24? Do you know anything about this process of prisoners coming in, uh, they then subsequently have their photos taken, and then um, what would happen afterwards with them? Do you have any idea as to that particular process? But I do not know on this on this particular issue since uh, it was not uh, within the scope of uh, my implementation, so I cannot say about it. Let me read to you um, an excerpt from uh, someone who was involved in that whole process, and then I will ask you whether uh, you can give your reaction. Um, I will be referring, Mr. President, to uh, the WRI of the Chief of the Photography Unit, that is uh, document E3-7639. Um, more particularly to uh, English ERN 00162736, Khmer 001. 62713 and French 00338079. So like I said, this um, the chief of the photography unit, uh, Nim Kim Srang, uh, says the following. Question. After their photos were taken, where were the prisoners sent? Answer. The majority of the prisoners who had been photographed were sent to farm rice. But aside from that, I don't know. Those prisoners sent to farm rice were mostly minor people. I went along and photographed that. I saw that they farmed rice. A little before, just to be complete, in that same WRI, um, English ERN 00162733334, Khmer 00162710, and French 00338076, uh, the same photographer, chief of the photography unit, describes an incident with Duik. And he says, one day, when I was developing, um, photos were damaged. And when I requested to retake the photos, I could only find two of them. And I asked Duik, uh, brother, the prisoners brought in yesterday. Where have they all gone? He said they had all gone to the rice fields. Uh, go photograph them at the rice fields, end of quote. Can you give a reaction to um, what he is describing? Is that something that you knew at the time? But regarding the photographers, I have no knowledge of uh, that issue since they had different tasks to perform and I had my own. I understand. Let's let's leave the, f the actual photo taking aside. But have you ever heard from anyone while you were working in S21 um, that also the people who were sent to uh, Presar um, were registered 
and photograph, photographed within uh, S21. But the work at Preysaw is beyond my knowledge. Do you know um, whether you, when you were working as a guard, um, were in a position to tell if a truck leaving the premises of S21 uh, would either go uh, to Chiang Ek, either go to Prey Sar, or maybe a third location? During the time when I uh, performed my guard duty, at the time there was not yet uh, the education location at Preysa. First, uh, it is that education or refashioning location was established uh, at S21. I do not know where the tracks were sent to, and I. I do not know whether there was education location at a place saw. Do you know whether at any point in time prisoners you had interrogated uh, were sent uh, to Presar? The prisoners I had interrogated so far were not seen that they were sent to that location. And uh, the principle at S21 is that uh, no prisoners after interrogation were released. Um, maybe not released in the sense of being free, uh, but sent to be re-educated at uh, S24, uh, Bresar. Do you know whether that happened with any of the people you inter inter interrogated? I do not know about that. So would it then be fair to say that you have, generally speaking, no idea what would happen uh, to prisoners to, that you uh, interrogated? The reason I said uh, I do not know is that I do not know, and I would, I will only speak uh, for what I have seen, have known, and have witnessed. Very good, um, Mr. Witness. That's how it's supposed to be. Um, now let me move on to um, a few other matters before I, 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 I start talking about the interrogation. Um, you, you talked um, briefly this morning answering questions from the um, civil parties lawyers um, about the, the house where you uh, interrogated prisoners. How many interrogation houses or places were there in total um, on the premises of S21 and the outer perimeter? The houses of interrogation, the distance of those houses, were not of specific length from the to S21, and the houses which could be used for interrogation would serve as interrogation location, and 
a little bit outside the fence of prison, there were all those houses for interrogation. And then there was a there was a corrugated zine uh, fence outside uh, that uh, houses those houses. Um, is it correct that there were about uh, seven in houses where interrogations took place? More than seven houses, or perhaps uh, seven or more than though, uh, seven. And do you know whether some were uh, 50 meters away and some were 100 meters away, uh, maybe some were the next block? Can you be a little bit more specific as to um, the location of those interrogation houses? Interrogation houses were located in the east of uh, the gate into S21. The, I'm, I, ref, I am referring to the old gate of S21. It's, those houses were located uh, rather to the north of S21, and those houses were located along the road leading to the outer fence, and Duke's house was located uh, close to Moni Wong Boulevard. So those uh, houses within the block were used for interrogation, and there were blocks, other, there, there was another block of houses also uh, for interrogation of a prisoner as well. Uh, let me focus on the house where you interrogated prisoners. Did you always use the same house? But I used uh, the same house uh, for interrogation until I left that uh, location. Uh, do you know whether it was possible um, for prisoners on the compound of S21 uh, to hear your voice or the voice of the person who was interrogated? Regarding the loud voice, the loud voice could be heard since uh, the house was located around uh, 50 or 60 meters away from the prison, not 100 meters away from the prison. I'll, I'll get back to that. Let me first ask you some uh, more general questions um, about you as an interrogator. Um, do you remember when your first interrogation took place? Answer. At first, I interrogated prisoners to the north of uh, the gate into S21. Rather, it's, it was to the south of uh, S21. That was the first location when I uh, conducted uh, the interrogation. Uh, that happened at the, the small road uh, in the south of uh, the gate. But, but do you remember when it was the first time that you interrogated someone?
witness, could you specify the time frame once again, which specific period of time you are asking me? Uh, well, I was hoping you would tell me. My question was, um, do you remember when it was the first time that you interrogated a prisoner? Winner, thank you, Council. I cannot recall the month and the year. And at the time, I was not interested in the time frame. I had to perform my tasks, and I had to complete my tasks as soon as possible. I was not so interested in timeline. It may have been in mid-1976 or late-1976. Um, yesterday you identified your signature on a confession um, of uh, Eng Meng Heng alias John B3-1549. Um, that confession um, and your signature um, were somewhere in February 1977, 24 February 77. Um, do you know whether he was one of the first people you in, you interrogated, or was was he already number ten or or fifteen or twenty? Do you remember? That was the prisoner I first interrogated interrogated by myself. It was before the time you mentioned, but I cannot tell you for sure when exactly it was. Are you saying that he was the one you interrogated for the first time by yourself, and that maybe before you interrogated others, um, other prisoners with, with someone else? Amen Chun, the prisoner whom I interrogated in the first place, but the interrogation was conducted together with another interrogator, and the name of the interrogator was in that document, not my name. And at the time, I was learning from that interrogator how to interrogate. Um, we also discussed yesterday, presumably, your, your very last interrogation, the one on the 4th of January, 1979. Can you give an indication as to uh, how many prisoners you have interrogated in total between February 77 and uh, January 79? I cannot recall well. Perhaps uh, there were a little bit more than 20 prisoners, and I cannot tell you for sure how many prisoners I did the interrogation. Um, the organization DC Chem did an analysis of S21 documents, and they come to a number of 53 confessions uh, somehow with your name on it. Would that be? A more accurate number, 53? I simply cannot recall the number of the uh, locations that I did. However, I can uh, say that maybe 
there were more than 20, con 20 integrations that I did. And certain confessions uh, seems to bear my signature, although it may not be mine. Because the handwritings on those documents or confessions are not mine. Um, do you know whether you were a member of a certain interrogation group? I'm not talking about the chewing group uh, or the uh, hot group or the cold group, um, but I'm talking about a number. Um, were you a member of um, either group one or group two or group three? I was in group three. Um, well, um, I have in front of me um, a confession E3 slash 4260, um, confession of, uh, signed by you on the 3rd of May 1977, English ERN 0072984, Khmer 0025795. I don't have the French uh, at this uh, moment, Mr. President, I apologize. But uh, here it says you are a member, you are a member of group two. And um, the confession that we just spoke about uh, mentions that you were a member of group 12. Um, that is document E3 slash 1549, uh, English ERN 0076910. May zero zero one seven four four two eight. Um, so, what was it? Group two, group three, group twelve. Do you remember? I am not 100% certain of which group I belonged to. The first uh, group was uh, the hot group, the second group was the cold group, so on and so forth. So maybe my memory does not uh, serve me well in relation to which group I belonged. Well, the reason I'm asking is um, um, uh, Duik, when asked, confirms that there were three methods, the hot method, the cold method, and the chewing method. But there weren't three groups, as you say. Let me read to you um, what he said, um, uh, E3 slash uh, 1570. Um, I only have the English ERN at this stage, 0015492. He says, uh, I confirm that there were indeed three methods of interrogation. Um, but I was not the one who decided to spread the interrogators into three groups. I did not know about this organization, which may have existed since Nuts period. I provided training to the interrogators on, uh, interrogators on those methods of interrogation, but I did not spread them into three groups. It means that the interrogators could use each, me each method depending on the prisoner. Can you react to that, uh, Mr. Witness? What I studied at the political study uh, sessions by uh, Deutsch, Deutsch uh, reiterated uh, these uh, statements, and I do not know from which level he uh, received uh, that information. He provided us with the uh, training and the uh, techniques 
that the first group was a uh, hot group, the second group was the cold group, and the third group was uh, the chewing group, etc. And that uh, each member of the group has to follow the techniques that he uh, taught us. That is in relation to the hot groups that prisoners had to be tortured or had to be beaten. And for the cold uh, group, we had to use the politics to convince the uh, prisoners so that they had trust uh, in us and confessed. As for the uh, chewing uh, group, we had to actually uh, trick the prisoners so that uh, the prisoners uh, became or misunderstood a statement and uh, provided uh, the response. Um, in in uh, what seems to confirm what you're saying that there was indeed such a thing as a chewing group is document E3 slash 2007, Mr. President, Khmer uh, uh, ERN uh, 00039529. English zero zero two three three seven five five and French zero zero eight six three seven nine eight. The document speaks about a chewing group um, of which uh, Lakmin was also a member. Um, it's dated the twenty fourth of May nineteen seventy eight. Um, signed by the chewing group, uh, a person called Nan or Nan. Do you know? Uh, who Narn was? Was he the chief of the chewing group? Yes, uh, there was Narn. There were Chen Tet in the, who were in the group of uh, Narn, and they were the right hand men of uh, Duch, and they came from Om Leng. Generally, I saw Nand uh, at the special prison, and he uh, did not come to the ordinary interrogation uh, rooms. Nan and Chen, they all had a uh, bald head, and uh, they had dark complexions uh, since they came from Om Leng area. But Nand uh, was not in charge of the chewing group. He was uh, with the uh, special prison group. As for that, that was with the chewing group. Um, now let me return to the number of 20 interrogations. Um, maybe there were more, but let's um, follow what you said, 20 uh, interrogations. Um, did you always use the chewing method with those uh, 20 prisoners? Or did you also resort to cold methods or to hot methods? Regarding the interrogation conducted by members of the uh, chewing uh, group, they employed all methods, that is, uh, cold method, hot method, and sometimes they resorted to uh, violence. L let me, let me um, restrict myself to you only. Um, the 20 interrogations that you only were involved in, that you yourself use all three method, methods uh, when necessary, the chewing one, the, the cold method, and the hot method, you yourself. As I have uh, stated, the, the use all kinds of uh, methods, uh, that is hot and cold, 
and the word uh, chewing means that the interrogation would last uh, much longer. Maybe it's 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 easier to uh, limit myself to one particular uh, interrogation. But let's let's stick to the interrogation of um, Eng Meng Hang, alias John, E three slash one five four nine. Just mention it. Uh, you said that, that that his interrogation was your first interrogation by yourself. Um, did you use with him hot methods? And if yes, which ones? Regarding Chun, whom I personally interrogated, Torture was uh, inflicted upon him, although it was uh, at a minimum. What did you do with him? I used a uh, nearby tree branches uh, to beat him to beat uh, his hand, legs, and back. And how exactly did you do that? Did you uh, leave him in the room, go out, uh, took that tree branch, and started hitting him? The prisoner was in uh, the room and uh, the three branches uh, were about one or two meters away from the uh, the room's wall so i just uh, broke those three branches when the door was opened and i used it and do you remember what 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 was it that made you decide at that very moment to hit him with tree branches I wish not to respond to that question. And, and why is that, Mr. Witness? I wish not to answer that. Um, Mr. President, um, I understand the witness has a right not to incriminate himself, um, but it seems he already answer the question that he hit uh, the prisoner. So I do not understand how he could incriminate himself when he says something about the why. Perhaps duty counsel wishes to <laughs> talk to the witness? You follow counsel? <laughs> Maybe he's not following. That's possible. But 
When I say that, I uh, wish not to respond to that question because I have uh, repeatedly uh, spoken about that. And I don't want to uh, speak about it again, otherwise it's going to be a burden to, upon me. But if you insist, then I can say for one more time that I beat uh, the prisoner with three branches because he uh, changed his uh, confession. So sometimes I had to scare uh, the prisoner And that's why I use three branches uh, for that purpose. Uh, I understand, but um, which part of the confession did he change? What did he change from from what to what? What exactly was it um, that made you decide, presumably for the first time, to hit someone? Of course, I cannot recall such uh, details that uh, when he changed uh, his story. What I can say is that at one point he said something and uh, next day he said uh, something else. And for that reason, I made a request to the upper uh, level to to uh, beat him and I was uh, authorized and that's what I did. At this very first example, uh, the very first time that you beat um, John, who gave you authorization to use tree branch to hit him? It was Dutch. How long did you hit him? How many times did you hit him the first time? It was not that long at the time. Uh, he was a former professor, so he started uh, writing on a piece of paper his uh, confession. That is, after uh, uh, he was uh, bitten, he wrote a clear story. How many times did you beat him? I cannot recall that. It happened over 30 years ago. Um, was there a next time, uh, was there another time, uh, on another day, uh, that you hit him again? I cannot recall that. Did you use any other methods, uh, any other hot methods with him? But the way that I beat him, that was a form of torture, and that is the hot method. I understand, but was it only once that day? Or did it happen again and again, other days? <coughs> of course, the torture uh, was not uh, carried out on, on one day. It happened on a number of days, but I cannot recall how many. Did you use telephone wires, el electrocution by telephone wires with him? For this particular prisoner, no. Telephone wire was not used uh, to, uh, to shock him. Only at a later stage, uh, prisoners were subject to electric shock from that uh, telephone. 
when, when was that method introduced? Electric shocks were used at a later stage. Did you use a plastic bag to suffocate him? Men. Yeah. Yes, uh, that method was used. My question is, did you use a plastic bag on John? No, I did not uh, use that method with uh, John. Did you, do you remember whether you in any way humiliated John? Yes, I threatened him, but I cannot uh, detail all uh, the days that uh, I did that. Uh, without going into details, but do you know, um, in general terms, the accusation against him? Do you know what he accu was accused of? President, uh, witness, please hold on, and International Deputy Co-Prosecutor, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Mr. President. This is the same objection that the defense made yesterday. As a matter of fact, we have understood the history developed by the witness. He did not receive any documents with charges against the um, prisoner. It was up to him to discover what the witness, the detainee, had done. So the question is not properly for formulated. So nobody had told him what the prisoner was charged with. It was up to the prisoner to tell him what he was uh, accused of. I think the prosecution is testifying now on behalf of the witness. Um, I'm, I'm, as, as you might have observed, I'm, I'm limiting my questions to a very particular instance. Um, and uh, my question, I think, without going into the specifics, is, is allowed, uh, whether he remembers what, in general, um, the accusation or the offense was that um, John was possibly involved in. President, the question is uh, permissible and the objection by the deputy co prosecutor is uh, overruled. And witness, please respond to the question. Witness. During my interrogation, Chun confessed that he was uh, within a CIA uh, network. Let me let me step away from from that, um, Mr. Witness. Um, take you back a bit in time, um, one or two months before uh, you interrogated John. Um, maybe to January, 1977. Uh, at that time, have you had you heard of? plans to stage to stage a coup d'etat um, uh, to start a rebellion led by uh, Koitun, Chakrai, uh, Ya from the Northeast and others? No, I did 
did not know or hear anything about that. This is the first time that I hear of this. Well, I'm, I'm not allowed to go to the content of uh, the confession, um, but I'm not sure whether that answer is plausible, um, Mr. Witness. But um, have you ever heard of the later stage of involvement of um, Koitun, uh, Division Commander Un, uh, Division Commander Sun, 450? Uh, involvement in uh, plans to overthrow the legitimate government of Democratic Kampuchea. No, I did not hear about that. Did you never, at any point in time, hear about um, accusations leveled against Koitun? I only knew that uh, Koitun was arrested, but I did not know about any plan about his uh, involvement. Um, it's, it's very tempting to go to uh, uh, his confession, but I won't. Uh, um, so but let me see if I can jog the witness's memory through um, another way. Um, Mr. Witness, Chan was your boss, wasn't he? did not know the real position Chan held. However, I saw Chan at the uh, Deutsche workplace, and to me it seems that he was uh, an aide or assistant to Deutsche. Um, Mr. President, I would like to show um, an excerpt from Chan's notebook. Um, the particular excerpt is um, written down in such a way um, that it is it's highly unlikely that it is coming from, um, from confessions. It seems to be more the product of uh, what he heard at study sessions. It is document E3-833. Um, Khmer ERN 0007-1. Uh, 826. Uh, there seems to be no French um, translation. Uh, I will come to that separately because it seems that there's another French, transla French tra translation for one part of the notebook and an English for the other part. I have with me the actual excerpt from the notebook um, and I would like to show that to the witness uh, to see if that refreshes his memory. Est-ce que vous pourriez répéter les numéros de RN? Could you please repeat the ERN numbers? I didn't have the time to jot them down. Um, the document uh, that I have, it's, it's, it's a bit peculiar and unusual uh, document, um, Judge Lavergne. Um, it, it has an E3 number, E3833. I do not see an English ERN. I did find the Khmer ERN, um, uh, the original Khmer ERN of the notebook. Uh, there are no French ERNs of this particular page, it seems. What I have established is that there is a French translation of the latter part of the book, 
an English translation of another part of the notebook. Uh, it's still a bit confusing, but what I do have is the Khmer version and the Khmer year end uh, of document E3 slash 833. So, under these conditions, how can we check the content of the document that you intend to uh, present to the witness? I'm sorry, I don't have very advanced Khmer skills, I must confess. I, I have a first year and English year and number, but I'm not making this document up. It's E3 slash 833. It's called. Uh, uh, the Chan notebook. Uh, it says key text highlighted. Uh, the English ERN, which we have written down with pen, uh, is 00184579, and then following. And uh, what we do, we did find the Khmer ERN of that particular excerpt, and that page is uh, 00077826, and it is the Khmer page that I would like to show to the witness. The English ERN with, is a translation of this Khmer page you want to show. Do I understand that correctly? Yes. President, court officer, please uh, obtain the document from counsel and uh, present it to judge. Thanks. Uh, for the record, I can give you now the full range of the English ERNs, not only the first number. It is um, 00184579, um, until 00184618. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President. A request for clarification. I didn't understand if the page has been translated into English or into French. I understood, I understood not, but could my colleague uh, clarify? Because I believe that there are partial translations of the document, but that the specific page that he wants to use is available neither in English nor in French. Did I understand uh, this correctly? No, 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 no that's, that's not correct. The, there is an English translation. That's how I know it. Um, I think the prosecution yesterday also showed an excerpt and said there was only a French translation of that particular excerpt that he wanted to show. But as I understand it, uh, the Khmer document has been partially translated in English, partially translated in French, but not the same parts. That's, that's the situation. When you say not the specific pages, which are the exact pages you're speaking about? Are these the pages you intend to use? What I will be using is a Khmer page and an English page from the same document. Whether there's a French translation, I, don't know, I do not know, but I presume there isn't, otherwise the prosecution will, will say so. You, just to be clear, you are using the Khmer version of what in English is 00184579 to 4618. Exactly. Mr. President, I believe I have identified the pages might assist the defense in English. It's 00184591. It refers to a part related to February 1978, and he's speaking to Sotchuk and Chakray. 
He's speaking about Tsotchuk and Chakray, correct, the interpreter. I don't believe that there is a French translation, however. That is, in the, <coughs> that is indeed the excerpt. Um, meanwhile, I think the witness has uh, the original Khmer. Uh, Mr. Witness, did you have time to have a look at this excerpt? Meanwhile, let me read to you what I have in English, um, and that you can read along, Mr. Witness. Uh, in English, I have um, the group of Asot, Achuk, Achakrai as a stepping board. June 76 made a coup with Achakrai as the core, that is to attack the party center, especially brothers one and two. Later on, the unit of Aun um, apparatus, that is, the Workers' Party of Kampuchea with Imperialist America, the Yun, and the Soviets above them. They intended to grab brother at Banrai Kaila. We arrested many of them, especially 170. The Yun and Soviet forces dissolved. There remained only the forces of Atuch. Um, it's, 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 these, these are notes, I presume, from um, a session, but I'm not sure. Do you recognize uh, the handwriting? Do you recognize the text? I do not know whose writing it was. That's no problem, but do you recognize the content? Does the content somehow jog your memory in relation um, to your interrogation of Chon? This document has, has nothing to do with the confession of a main alias Chon. Let's step away from Chon, but do you now, having seen this document, recall something about coup d'etat plans led by Khoi Thun, Division Commander Un? I do not know about the plan that was the business of uh, the upper echelon and the I do not know whether the other subordinates uh, knew about that plan and for me I, I do not know and at the time I did not learn that, that uh, some particular individual had been arrested. I learned about that later on and the plan was not uh, disseminated to me. President, thank you. It is now time for a break. The court will take a short break from now until 3 p.m. Court officer, please find a waiting room for the witness during the break time and please invite him together with the duty council into the courtroom at 3 p.m. The court is now in recess.